It's an attempt to explain about the uh, physiological changes during pregnancy uh, in regards to the respiratory system. So in a normal adult, we have about the 6,000 um, capacity in the lung. So uh, when we inspire at the rest, resting uh, state, so when we inspire and exhale, this is a tidal volume. But when we try to inhale at the fullest maximum capacity of the lung, so we call this inspiratory residual volume. And this is the tidal volume. So the tidal volume in a normal uh, state is about uh, 500 mils. Tidal volume is 500 mils. So we have here 2,500 mils and here it become 3,000 mils. Okay, now we try to exhale to the fullest. <sighs> However, we still cannot exhale the whole maximum lung capacity until zero because we still have the what we call a residual volume here. So residual volume is what keeps the alveoli open. Otherwise, it's going to be collapsed. So the residual volume in a normal condition is 1,200 mils. Okay, and we have the expiratory residual volume. Okay, so now uh, the usual questions in the MRCOG is about the... First of all, we go step by step. So this is the um, tidal volume. Okay, so what is um, inspiratory capacity? Inspiratory capacity basically this, which is the tidal volume plus the inspiratory residual volume. So here, for example, we have a tidal capacity, a cap tidal volume of 500 mils and inspiratory residual volume about 3,000 mils. So the inspiratory capacity becomes 3,500 here. So this is the inspiratory capacity. And what is the expiratory capacity? That's basically the tidal volume. So this is the tidal volume inhalations and this exhalations. So tidal volume plus the expiratory residual volume. So now we have 500 here uh, plus the expiratory residual volume, which is 1,300 1, mils. So it takes us about 1,800 here. So this is the expiratory capacity so what is the total uh sorry what is the vital capacity vital capacity basically this part so vital capacity is inspiratory residual volume plus the tidal volume plus the expiratory residual volume this is Let it dry first. So this is the uh, vital capacity. Inspiratory residual volume plus inspiratory residual volume. So let's do the math. We have 500 here plus 1,300 plus the inspiratory residual volume 3,000 mils. So we have 4,800 mils here. This is the vital capacity. And uh, what is the total lung capacity? Capacity is the whole thing here. Total lung capacity, which is the tidal volume plus the expiratory residual volume plus the residual volume, and of course, plus the inspiratory residual volume. So it's the whole thing. And this is equal to 6,000 mils. Okay, so what happened during pregnancy? This is in the normal conditions. Uh, what happened during pregnancy is that at the third trimester, when we have the fetus here occupying the abdominal cavity, causing the it needs more space now. It goes up from the normal uh, diaphragm location. It goes up about four centimeter here. So when it goes up, that means it's increased the abdominal pressure. So what we have here. There are two things that we have in different. The first one is the lung compliance, which is the trans um, alveoli. 
lung compliance and we have a chest compliance so compliance is actually the volume divided by the pressure so now since we have increase of the pressure and reduce in the volume uh, there will be a reduce in the chest compliance chest compliance that reduce but the lung compliance will be just the same but how does uh, our body try to adapt with this condition because we need more oxygen because the oxygen demand during pregnancy is increased about 20 percent right okay so what happened is that um, there are a few mechanisms here but just go uh, first to the um, control of the respirations, which is in the medulla. So there's a medulla here. There's a spinal cord here. Okay. So here we have a central, central chemoreceptor. This central chemoreceptor is only sensitive to carbon dioxide and also pH. And at the peripheral, we have what we call a carotid body and also carotid body. And also the aortic arch or aortic body. This will be the peripheral chemoreceptor chemoreceptor okay and this actually uh, stimulated by the central nervous um, the cranial nerve number 10 and this is number 9 the glossopharyngeal and also the vagal nerves okay so what we have here is another one this is the chemoreceptor peripheral chemoreceptor so we have another one, what we call a mechanoreceptor. Mechanoreceptor, which actually, for example, present in the nose when we can feel the pollen. And the mechanoreceptor also, we have it in the lung and also in the abdomen. So for example, in the exertions or when there is a smoking, there is a mechanoreceptor that can detect so that we exhale better. Um, and if there is a pollen, for example, or dust, there is a mechanoreceptor that's stimulated and uh, will actually give a stimuli to the uh, respiration center. So the abdomen, due to the increase of the pressure in the presence of the fetus, it will also give a stimuli to the um, respiration center. So usually the lung and abdomen will go via the uh, vagal nerve as well. While the from the nose, it goes from another nerve, which is the trigeminal nerve number five. So now we have here the increase of the pressure uh, cause the mechanoreceptor to give some uh, information to the uh, respiration center. And another one, the number two mechanism is that the, the progesterone that produced by the placenta actually um, stimulate the central nervous system straight away, central nervous system to increase the sensitivity towards the carbon dioxide because it's only sensitive to carbon dioxide while the peripheral sensitive to oxygen carbon dioxide and also the ph this is also the question that always ask in the mrcog the difference between the chemoreceptor peripheral and also the central so now here Due to the so the chest compliance is, is reduced and due to the space occupying, we have a total lung capacity which will reduce by five percent. So by means the five percent is uh from six uh thousand is actually five thousand seven hundred mils. So now the whole thing is actually reduced in pregnancy. So we only have five thousand. 700 mils here. So let us catch a bit. 
I'm using two hands now, that's why the camera is moving. So, because, because uh, the tidal volume will increase in pregnancy, mm, it will increase by 50%. So, we have the increment here from this is the tidal volume. So, we have the increment of the tidal volume by 50%. The 50% of the tidal volume that increase is actually 705, 750 mils. So by means, since the total lung capacity is reduced, the inspiratory residual volume also reduce. And as we know, the residual, the residual volume and also expiratory residual volume also reduce by 20% each. So uh, from here, we can get the inspiratory residual volume also reduced by 2%. So due to this, the vital capacity which is here. Will be the same. It does not change. Let's do the mathematics. So uh, the tide, uh, total um, tidal volume is increased by 50% here. We want to, to calculate this because in, uh, in the MCQ, it, they ask us what is the uh, unchanged, which is the vital capacity was unchanged. So uh, we have 50% increment here, so 750. And we have reductions by 20% of the aspiratory residual volume, so 1,300, so less than 20%, so it's become 1040. And then the inspiratory residual volume, it will also reduce by two percent right so we'll get somewhere four thousand seven hundred somewhere there so the vital capacity as compared to before is four thousand eight hundred and now it's four thousand plus plus four thousand seven hundred plus so that's basically has no significant change in the vital capacity so if they ask what will be the things that increase during pregnancy? So as we know, the tidal volume will increase by 50%. And what will be the unchanged just remain the same? That will be the vital capacity with the force expiratory volume at one minute and also the PE. What is this basically? This is a reading during the spirometry where we have the time or minutes here. Just set one minute. And this is the uh, volume. So let's say 6 liter. Okay. So what is FEV is actually the full expiratory volume the force expiratory volume so it's like this so basically during pregnancy there is no change in the fev and also this is fev one and this is the uh, vital lung capacity uh, okay so what is actually reduced? The first one is the chest compliance. Chest compliance. And by the way, the lung compliance does not change here. The chest compliance reduced. And then the inspiratory residual volume reduced. The expiratory residual volume reduced. The residual volume reduced. The total lung capacity also reduced. The vital capacity remained the same. The tidal volume is increased by 50%. So, I hope it helps.